I'm Dr. Marga gonzalez Sacon from the University of Oviedo, and I will present today the content of one of my latest publications, which is precisely related to the concept of new directions in Irish studies. And I will do this by trying to establish a relationship between the new um, performances of Irish theatre and the concept of the Anthropocene, and exemplifying through the play Melt by Shane, um, the playwright Shane uh, Mackenbert. So I will start by saying that um, the new millennium has marked a moment when it can be argued that there is no such thing as the Irish theatre. There are Irish theatre, theatres, sorry, whose forms continue to multiply as they leave behind the fantasy of a single uh, unifying image, origin or destiny. The post-accession theatre has been marked by the emergence of new companies, which challenge the very notion of what theatre meant as regards concepts such as form and location. And this can be exemplified through the cases of three companies, Broken Talkers, Anu and uh, Wilfred. Broken Talkers based their working method in collaborative work and improvised writing, being one of their best acknowledged achievements, the play Silver Stars, a cycle of songs about gay men and uh, their lives in Ireland when homosexuality was considered a crime. Blue Boy also brought the company international recognition. It constituted a denounce of child abuse in Ireland in the Catholic uh, residential institutions. Also interested in this representation of societal issues in our and Iris uh, traumas from the past, Anna Productions presented its uh, tetralogy known as the Monto Cycle between 2009-2014. The company defined themselves, and I quote, devoted as devoted to an interdisciplinary approach to performance installation that cross-pollinates visual art, dance, and theatre in an intensely collaborative way. End of quote. Finally, Wilfred was created by one of the founding members of Hanu, Sophie Motley, and it shares this interest towards the importance of building a relationship between the communities that were represented and the spectators. They portray this, for instance, in Play Follow, where spoken text is combined with ISL to represent the collision of languages. At the same time, movements such as uh, Waking the Feminists signaled the relevance of activism in Irish theatre from the end of uh, 2015 onwards. It was considered, and I quote, as the campaign that revolutionised Irish theatre and formed at the Abbey during the 2016 centenary anniversary to denounce the public exclusion and discrimination of women artists. As regards the concept of new Irish theatre or new Irish theatres and the Anthropocene, this concept of the Anthropocene and its influence uh, is essential. And debates related to the climate change, environmental destruction, the, and the relevance of science and the effects of human actions on Earth are present, obviously, in literary texts. And it can be said that literature contributes to change and question uh, ethical values and to face human caused disasters such as the ones that uh, are exposed in the in the play melt. Irish scholars have recently revised this concept of the Anthropocene in relation to theatre studies. Um, this is the case, for instance, of Patrick Lonergan, who delivered the lecture Irish Theatres for the Anthropocene, drew to theatre Lady Gregory and Cool Park during the latest uh, ESL, the International Association of Irish Studies uh, conference. Lonergan mentioned works such as Island and Ecocriticism, uh, where interdisciplinary approaches are used to confirm this need to incorporate ecocriticism into Irish cultural studies. The chapters presented in this volume, for instance, which include the analysis of the poetry of Derek Mahon, Paula Meehan, or the fiction of John McGahern, or the travel literature of Rebecca Solnit, constitute pioneering analysis that confirm the need to do the same from the perspective of theatre. For Lonergan, this knowledge of the writers and also the knowledge of the playwrights obviously is related to nature and it speaks to our present, but also most importantly to our future. 
So the relationship between Irish theatre and the Anthropocene must also consider social justice activism, since these provide a background for new performances that have emerged in this context. These would include projects such as Green Arts, which was a, an initiative that supports Irish arts organisations to reduce their environmental impact. The initiative is currently running a pilot project that involves uh, venues such as the Town Hall Theatre in Galway or Hawkswell Theatre in Sligo. And the collaboration between Trinity College Dublin, Dublin Theatre Festival and the company Broken Talkers in 2021 has fostered the creation of Rising, which is a public themed artwork about climate change, which was presented as part of the uh, latest uh, Dublin Theatre Festival. Similarly, theatre companies such as, for instance, Fishamble have launched challenges such as uh, the Tiny Challenge, Tiny Place for a Brighter Future, through which writers are invited to send a 600 word play about the theme of climate, the environment, energy and sustainability and how this uh, might affect uh, or be affecting Irish communities. Additionally, the research report engaging pa the public on climate change through the cultural and creative sectors commissioned by the Creative Island Programme Office presented the findings of a two month research about cultural and creative sectors in Ireland and their involvement in climate change. It includes a compilation of 41 projects and initiatives delivered between 2009 2019 in Ireland that included workshops, literary events, films, art research projects and exhibitions, such as, for instance, Our Planet Planet, about the effects of greenhouse gas emissions in the melting of polar glaciers. And the conclusions of the report state that, and I quote, it is through the medium of culture and creativity that the underlying ethical, cultural, political and economic questions will be deliberated on, and that new sustainable values and ways of living will be disseminated. So MELT exemplifies this relationship between new Irish theatres and the Anthropocene. It has been described, and I quote, as planetary in scope, its themes are related to the damage that humans cause upon the earth, mass extinction and the economic forces behind all this. It was directed by Lynn Parker and first premiered in the Dublin Theatre Festival of 2017. The play has four characters, three scientists, uh, Samuel Boylan, Charlie Cook and Elaine Hansen and Viva, a creature that they discover. And they coexist in this liminal space, a lab in Antarctica, where a hole has been drilled into the ice cap to symbolize the entrance into the unknown, the, the, the ancient essence. The relationship between the Anthropocene and the need to address the consequences of human activity on the planet are represented through the characters of the scientists mainly. There is an opposition between the two main characters, Boylan as a vocational a senior investigator uh, in ecology, and Cook, a young, ambitious postdoc researcher who wants to improve his career. The ecological perspective, a key marker, uh, sorry, a key marker uh, of the Anthropocene, is present through the preoccupation about the consequences of their research. And the lake they find represents precisely this research into the indefinite, into space that has been hidden from the atmosphere for 25 million years. And the search that makes boil and state that the humankind is lost in this era. I quote, the man hasn't the slightest notion what he's looking for, end of quote. The description of this hole echoes the dark cavities through which the earth is humanized to symbolize in this play a dying being, but also to suggest the primal claim to start from scratch. I quote, the ice is hollowing. No, it is consuming. It is consuming. A store of itself. All that climatic data, oxygenated isotopes, that subtle degradation of the Earth's flavor accumulated over a millennia. It's all been eroded by the process of breakup. The Earth is forgetting itself, end of quote. So it can be said that the Earth is suffering from this environmental amnesia caused by the trauma of humankind. 
and the ice crystals have veins and seams in their flesh, and predictions on the impossibility that Antarctic ice will never break up are dismantled by Boylan, who finds a new space near the lake where Viva is surrounded by, and I quote, tall pillars of ice like long bones, a skeleton limbs reaching far, far up, disappearing into the darkness. So they found a uh, Viva, who, who, who is this baby crying in the cave, which they decide to take to the surface. And after analysing her, they observe that it grows very rapidly, responds to external stimuli, bleeds and echoes the stock character of the novel Savage. The scientists discuss the consequences of their discovery, while for Cook this will bring crowds eager to hear them lecturing. Boylan has no interest and criticizes again big corporations who, and I quote, will want X-rays, MRI, swabbing and slicing samples of her until there's nothing left, end of quote. In Act 2, the real and the surreal overlap in the play. Unable to cope with the strangeness of the situation, Cook will enter a state of decadence and destruction, and his behaviour and irrational speeches suggest that the rest of the play is a hallucination of the characters, or a dream where their fears are revived. Viva mirrors and takes the characters to the recognition of their true self, in the last scene, Boylan records a testament, while he and Cook melt ice to survive and eat some of the eggs that uh, Viva has laid, at the same time as they evoke uh, the humanity in men's capacity to destroy what surrounds them. And I quote, to humanity, to our unerring capacity for laying waste to the world while searching for impossible horizons to destroying what we love, end of quote. So this destruction of Viva's eggs is also linked to the destruction of the Earth and can be interpreted through a mythology, for instance, uh, the Pelaxian creation myth, which refers to the goddess Euronomy, who laid a universal egg out of which all forms of life sprang. And in this sense, the character of Viva connects the supernatural she emerged from the darkness, uh, prompting the possibility of a reality beyond human existence and the imaginable space and time. But in the end, mass extinction is suggested. And the mythological parallels can also be extended to Cook and Boylan, the Icarus like uh, scientists, um, which are obsessed with the success of their research. However, as uh, Shane McEnberg himself states, the ambition described here is closer to Didalus and Minus, that is, to the, to, to the human endless ambition and capacity uh, to destroy, in addition. In the words of the playwright, who was so kind as to share his thought on the play uh, with me, the labyrinth making, the political machinations of Didalus and Minus, the great calculated fix we are in, and the cross superfluous powers of minus. That's the real problem. End of quote. Thank you very much for, for your attention.